uh, what matters here. I understand what Rudy uh, was trying to do. I don't appreciate how he was doing it. I'll take that up with him later. Uh, but the sum and substance of, of this, it doesn't matter what the president said to the president of Ukraine. It's fine. What is the line? Well, so look, I mean, I, I'm not going to, I don't know what the facts are here. I'm, right. I'm a bit reluctant to speculate, obviously. And, you know, I... But can a president say anything my, to another president? Can a president say, and no, a president can't say literally anything. The president of the United States has been given authorities and duties and responsibilities that he must execute consistent with the Constitution and laws of the United States in the interests of the American people. He's taken an oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution, and he is obligated to take care that the laws are faithful, faithfully executed, among other things. So he can't say anything. He must act in a way that is consistent with his oath and consistent with his other uh, responsibilities on the, under the Constitution. What exactly was said in a conversation with a foreign leader, if that, what, if that is what this is all really about, right. and we don't know that, then he just can't say anything to some foreign leader uh, that might be unlawful, unethical, immoral, I illicit, that type of thing. So no, he, he, he doesn't do that. And the president, th this is something that I, I do get a little bit worked up about, um, is the president doesn't have any rights under the Constitution. The people have rights under the Constitution. The president has duties and responsibilities, and Fair he point. needs to put the interests of the American people, he needs to put the interests of the American people first at all times, so, not his own personal or political interests, in my opinion. So let's look at what was supposed to be the process here and what has gotten constipated to this point. So whatever the president said in this phone call, reportedly, um, made this U.S. intel official um, concerned enough to file a whistleblower complaint. It now goes to the IG. That's where the complaint is filed under the statute. The IG, according to Rudy Giuliani, does not do and has no ability to do any type of assessment of whether the complaint is believable. I don't think that that is true by any guideline I have looked at for an IG. What is your understanding? No, that's preposterous. The, the IG of the uh, intelligence community has plenty of uh, authorities and plenty of resources uh, to be able to investigate something of this nature, just like the other IGs do around uh, the, the government. I've been investigated many times by IGs. Uh, it's not a pleasant experience to go through, but they have plenty of resources. They produce mm -hmm. very voluminous, well-documented reports. Right. Uh, you might agree with them, you might disagree with them, but they have the capability, IGs in general, and this IG in particular, have the capability to investigate something of, of this scope, for sure. And that's, that, so that's, just, that's just preposterous. And whether somebody is a lawyer or not, it stands to reason that for the inspector general to assess a complaint and come up with a finding that it was urgent enough to motivate them to go to the DNI about it. Obviously, they had made a credibility assessment uh, and some type of sufficiency case on their own side. So now they go to the DNI and they say, we believe under the statute, uh, this is something in your purview uh, that should now be passed along to Congress. Now, two things happen. One is that the counsel on the DNI says, says no, I disagree. I don't think that this is within the DNI purview. What is your understanding of that type of conflict? Well, so that, that is a legitimate thing to me to, for, for the DNI to, to do. When he's confronted with this, if he had some level of confusion about it or didn't know exactly what to do, to consult with his, his counsel, his main lawyer, that seems legitimate to me. Uh, the, the general counsel of, the, of ODNI is a, a capable, trustworthy person of high integrity. And so it, it is legitimate to go seek his advice on, on that kind of question. And then that is what the legal advice is for the, uh, for the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, what, what the DNI general counsel says. So what but is my the... understanding here ahead, is... Ahead. Thanks, yeah, Jim. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, my understanding is that the next thing that happened is that, I don't know if it was the DNI directly or the uh, general counsel, one of them or both of them then went to the Justice Department to seek the Justice Department's views on what the law said with respect to what, what they could or, or had to do under these particular circumstances. And that then led to a, another a series of events I'm happy to chat with you about. Is that kosher? Is the DNI supposed to do that if it's not clear? 
Yeah, no, I mean, so when I was in the FBI as the general counsel and at the Justice Department, I frequently went in particular to the okay. Office of Legal Counsel, which is the, the office most likely that they went here, that, that, they, that they went to in this particular circumstance, to seek their counsel. The, you know, the OLC typically is, is, uh, uh, in, uh, has numerous very smart lawyers who, uh, who can help and give great advice and, and, and so on. So reaching out to OLC on a tough legal question doesn't seem improper or uh, you know anything untoward about that but that's probably what happened the thing about talking to olc though especially if you get an opinion from them is that their uh, legal determination is binding on your agency and the rest of the uh, executive branch right. they oper mm -hmm. olc operates under delegated authority from the president the president is the one who actually has the authority to make binding legal determinations for the entire executive branch he's delegated that authority to the attorney general and to the office of legal counsel and so the reality is for people in the executive branch what olc says goes they have right. the final word on what the law is for the executive branch all right i want to take one step sideways in the analysis and then i want to get back to the idea of what's supposed to happen now but the step sideways is this um rudy giuliani at some point in that interview admitted what he denied assuming he was you know really thinking about what i was asking which is yeah i went to ukraine and asked him to look into these allegations about biden um because i have all these affidavits he had a whole proof uh, argument there about why it was okay for him to do that. Uh, what are the guidelines for when it is okay? He says the president didn't know what he was doing until after he did it. So let's assume that for the sake of the analysis. What's the line? Yeah, I can't. I had a hard time understanding even exactly what he was saying, and I, I feel like I need a Next an aspirin us. and a ginger ale or a shot of whiskey or something after that whole uh, uh, discussion. Yeah. Imagine so, being me. Uh, I didn't really understand it completely. Uh, yeah. so, so, but uh, the well, idea of if he went to Ukraine and said, "You need to look at what happened uh, with Joe Biden and people trying to set up the Trump campaign," if he went there and said that to uh, Ukraine or to one of their places, one of their emissaries somewhere, if he delivered that message, how, why would that be wrong? Well, so the look, I don't know exactly why he's doing that. Is he doing that in connection with the campaign? Is he doing it under some other authority? Is he there at the direction of the president as some type of diplomat or something? It's not at all clear to me exactly why he was doing he it. He says he was just and defending his clients. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. I'm not going to sit here and pronounce, uh, Chris, that it's unlawful in some way right. uh, without having done a deeper analysis of that. But the, the, what, is, what is concerning to me is the extent to which the president and those around him are willing to go overseas to seek the assistance of foreign governments uh, in, with respect to internal affairs. Look, if, the, if the, uh, Mr. Giuliani thought that something was improper, the way to, do, the way to deal with if pro improper being illegal, go to the FBI, take the facts to the FBI, have them investigated. If there's some violation of U.S. law, then they're the ones that are equipped to deal with he it. Suggested, I, so I don't understand what he was doing. He suggested that he has given them all this proof that he has and he won't give it to me, and you heard his whole explanation uh, for that. Jim Baker, uh, I appreciate you helping me wade through the analysis, and I appreciate even you more, <laughs> you having to listen to the first interview uh, and wonder what I was going to ask you about coming out of it. I'm sure that that was a nice head trip for you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you. All right, so Thank now, you. now, as you're processing, well, what, what is the outcome of this kind of situation? Here's a suggestion. We have brand new numbers that suggest if you look at the polls, this dynamic of who's the enemy and who isn't and fair and fake and all of this stuff, it's having an effect on you. Not just the agita that Baker was talking about, but that it is motivating turnout in a way that we may not have seen before. The Wizard of Odds will put meat on those bones. Next.